on the breakfast ahead of the sixth anniversary of President Muhammad Buhari's administration on May 29. The presidency has listed strides made in different sectors of the economy. Also on the breakfast, Nigeria's Employers Consultative Association justifies adjustment in third-party vehicle insurance. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Ebopo. Happy New Year. And it feels really great to be back on your screen on, uh, you know, the second day of January 2023. Thank you so much. I hope you had a wonderful holiday or you're having a great holiday because I know that for some people the holiday continues. But let's, you know, head straight to the conversation. Now, uh, our top trending. Top trending is, you know, that segment. And usually we get to talk about what's making the rounds. What are people talking about? What's the engagement? Top on the list is that over the weekend, over 1.6 million PVs is uncollected in Lagos. That's according to INEC, the umpire responsible for the conduct of the elections. I mean, free conduct of any elections in Nigeria. Uh, that's the body that's saddled with that. Of course, uh, that report has been put out and it caused a lot of concern because Lagos as a state is an epicenter. So, yes, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, said that 1,693,963 PVCs have not been collected in Lagos State. The commission had disclosed this in a document that was released to a journalist. And uh, out of all of this, it said that 916,961 old PVCs and 777,002 new cards have not been collected by their owners in the state. According to INEC, Lagos had received 7,510,491 cards comprising 6,570,291 old and 940,200 new cards from you know, the headquarters that's in Abuja. He also added that a total of 5,816,528 PVCs, which is 5,653,330 5, old and 163,198 new cards had so far been collected in the state as of December 2022, 20, that's the 29. Uh, he went on to also reveal that 460,643 PVCs are yet to be collected in the Federal Capital Territory. That's the FCT. So it brings us to, you know, the conversation about the elections. Now, we understand that a lot of people have lost interest, you know, in the polity. Okay. The, the issue is some persons have become um, uninterested in the system. And so the word for it would be, political apathy and uh, too many persons say hey we don't trust the system because the system has been maneuvered it doesn't matter whether we cast our votes or not uh, what, will, what will be will be I mean these are some of the conversations you will hear on the streets uh, people would have including very learned you know persons these are the conversation but I think that that has changed to some extent and uh, with this particular report it calls for a lot of concern but let's also even say, uh, look at the reaction that's going on. Because if you look on uh, the social media or look at the social media, especially Twitter, you would see that there's been a lot of outcry as regards the process and the procedure of collecting these PVCs. Now, too many cry, too many reports, too many concerns about, uh, you know, INEC. Some people say that the going there, the, 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 you know, the system or the process of collecting the cards is quite frustrating. And so you have to resume maybe at 8 o'clock in the morning and before you leave the space, you know, you're talking about maybe 6 in the evening and it's so much. Now, we also need to factor in the fact that it's okay to say uh, persons are not collecting their PVCs, but what is INEC really doing about this outcry? Especially in Lagos. I mean, we're talking about Lagos now, uh, the, the state, 
the concerns. There's been too many outcry. Some people have said that the workers have been very, very, you know, uh, out of hand. Some people say they are, you know, very mean. A lot of complaints. They feel like, you know, the system is just deliberately being made. All of these excuses are made so they can't collect their PVCs. Right. So I, I think that it's 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 OK to publish, you know, the numbers of persons that have not collected their PVCs. It's also OK to factor in the process of collecting it. Is it seamless? Because what the complaint is that it's not seamless, it's difficult. And too many persons are discouraged. Right. If you live in Lagos, then you understand what it means. You probably might be living from a certain location. Maybe you're from the island and you're coming to the mainland to collect, depending on what it is, whether it's an old card or the new card. So, yes, we have a few more days before the elections. February, uh, you know, the 25th would be uh, one of it now. What do we expect? INEC, please pay attention to making it seamless for people to collect their PVCs. Can it be stress-free? Can the people just walk in and then collect their cards? There were several videos that made it to the internet where it felt like you need to see the crowd. I mean, if that's anything to go by, then we, there's a lot. We can't get to a system where a lot of people are disenfranchised, not because they don't want to get their PVCs, but because the process is very difficult. It's cumbersome, though. I mean, I'm out of words to describe the entire you know, procedure and process. How, why can't we find a means or a way where uh, people can work into these offices or different outlets and get their PVCs without wasting so much time, without all of the harassment. There's been also allegation where some persons are saying they have to pay or they have to tip the workers, whether they are ad hoc workers or, you know, they are staff of the uh, of INEC. They probably have to do extra to get it. And so... Um, it, it, it can be very discouraging, that's it. So I know that we don't have time, but with the little time that we have, it's important that we make efforts on our part as an organization, I mean, as, as, as an agency of government, that's INEC. And then we also have to be committed, on the other hand, as a people, to ensuring that you have uh, a, a responsibility, it's a civic responsibility, as much as it's not a crime, because to vote is, I mean, you, you choose to vote or not to vote. It's not a crime, but it's your choice. But if I were you, I'd decide to vote. Uh, whatever it would take, any sacrifice that it would take, it would be important. You know why? Because the elections or elections is about numbers. It's not about tweets and banter on social media. It's not about all the hailing and say, hey, this is who I want, all of the criticism. It's not enough. It goes beyond all of that. And so if you are tired of the status quo, if you're tired of the system, and if you're saying, hey, this is not what I want, the only way you can express yourself is go ahead and get your PVC. Now, we're saying this whether or not the system is seamless, whether it's stress-free, just go ahead and get your PVC, no matter what it takes. That's the only way for you to say, this is what I want. That's the only way you can take a decision. And it's in the numbers. If the numbers are not there, it's almost you know, possible for the system to be overturned. So the more people involved in the system, the better for the people because it's about the people, and that's what democracy is about. But another one quite interesting is that Chimamanda Adichie has been honored or was honored over the weekend. I mean, all of this happened with a title in her hometown. Odu Luau, uh, that title uh, that she was awarded with, uh, let's not forget that she's an award-winning author, right? And uh, during the weekend, like I mentioned, she was honored with this chieftaincy title in her hometown in Anambra. Now, now, according to the organizers of this event, it's because of her contribution, you know, to the um, development, right, of the community. So the title that was conferred on her is just a recognition of all that she has done. Uh, it means that one who writes for the world, and this would actually mean the first time we're having a woman to be conferred with a chieftaincy title in the hometown in Anambra State, Abba, with that title. Right. It was beautiful. There are a lot of pictures that made it to social media. Uh, pictures of Chimamanda Adeichi, uh, video as, as well. She looked very uh, lovely, pleasant to say. And uh, looking at the comments and reaction from Nigerians, it was nothing, you know, um, it was nothing out of the ordinary. It was something very commendable. And now some persons have said that this is not new because with this title, Chimamanda Adeichi will officially continue the legacy of her father, Professor James Nguye. 
uh, Adeichi, who was also loved by the community. And he was giving to writing as well. So yes, it's a very good one and it's very pleasant to start the year with all of this recognition. Congratulations to her and of course uh, friends and families as well. We hope that uh, we get to celebrate more wins from uh, very notable Nigerians as this. Uh, next on the top trending is that the APC presidential flag bearer, uh, Tunubu, denies meeting the PDP G5 governors in London. Bola Tinubu, who is the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, had reacted to the recent report on an alleged meeting involving some governors of the People's Democratic Party. And there's been that report in recent times that the G5 governors, uh, who are members of the PDP, had met with uh, Tinubu in London and agreed to endorse him. Don't forget these G5 governors include Yesam Week of River State, Shea Makinde of Oyo State, Ikpeazu of Abia State, Samuel Otom of Benue State, Ifanyi Ugunwanyi of Enugu, among other stakeholders, have been at the forefront of the call for the resignation of Iyachu, Iyochayu, I beg your pardon, uh, stepping down as the PDP national chairman in the interest of equity, you know, because we're saying, oh, if we're talking about uh, power rotation, rationalizing power, uh, then it would just be fair for the party that uh, you can't have the chairman from a certain region, the north, and then the presidential candidate. It would just be fair that it, it goes, you know, to another party. But that has not, you know, taken a different uh, turn. It's been the same. And then you have the G5 governors. It would probably be the first time we're having this in the lexicon. <laughs> and the Nigerian lexicon where you say the G5, usually you hear the G7 countries, the G20, the G this, the G that. But in Nigeria now, we're, we're talking about the G5. Uh, some people think that this is very interesting or not interesting. But what should we expect? Did these governors meet with Tunubu? It's another question. Yes, because there are several feelers. There are several encrypted posts and comments that have been made by very prominent and respectable APC members alluding to the fact that, yes, there's been a meet. Maybe you have uh, one or two of these governors giving a yes. And so out of the five, maybe two have said yes. So uh, it's just natural that there would be some denial and what have you, but what has happened would have happened. And maybe as a people, we're not able to verify because there's a lot of back and forth with this conversation. Yes, it, it, there's no meeting. Oh, we have not confirmed. Yes, we have confirmed and all of that. But should all of this be happening has always been the crux of the conversation. But we leave that. Uh, it's very important that you haven't gotten your PVC, get your PVC because you um, have the power to decide who becomes what and who does not become what. Uh, become what? Now, and if you understand all of that, then it's very important for our democracy as a people over time. Yes, we know we live in a climb where people have been made to believe that uh, it doesn't really matter, your vote does not count, and that's what a lot of persons have, you know, swallowed. That's, you know, that um, information that's been out that it doesn't matter whether you vote or not. Oh, yes, it will be truncated. The people would always have their will. The system will be manipulated. What will happen will happen. But you see, the times have actually changed. And I, I think that it's important that you key into that. You are very important in the electoral process in our democracy as a country. And it's important that you understand that and get your PVC and get ready to cast your votes, you know, come February. That's the much we can take at this point. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll continue with the conversation right here. Please stay with us.